Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to cover the basic functions of a CPC3 startup. This 40-minute webinar is designed to offer a tutorial on the basic procedures required while performing a CPC3 constant pressure control system startup. It will cover pre-startup objectives, actual startup procedures, and post-startup practice. I will walk you through each step of the startup, putting emphasis on wiring, key features, and things to look out for. The objective of today's course is to give ample instruction of a CPC3 system startup, to familiarize you with this system, to provide you the knowledge to instruct others on how to perform the CPC3 system startup, and to provide you with the opportunity to understand the CPC3, its key functions, and what to look out for before, during, and after a system startup. The course topics will include pre-startup, including verifying the wiring and verifying component installation, the actual startup, including the key actions, the startup procedure, and fan rotation checkout, and post-startup, including additional key functions, draft adjustment, and panel lockout. When you walk onto a job that you're going to start up, the first thing you should do is verify all the wiring to be sure everything is connected as it should be. There will be lots of wires, so it's best to have the electrician's responsibilities on the spec. Here you will want to verify all of the wiring connected to the CPC3 panel. You want to double check the power supply to the CPC3. This can either be provided by the main breaker or disconnect, or from the VFD and is capable of accepting 115 volts AC power or 230 volt AC power. Next, check the interlocking terminal blocks across the bottom of the panel. Verify there is a call signal on either A and B or terminals one and two, and a run signal across terminals three and four or just terminal four. You should also be checking for the 10-wire communication cable across the top of the board. Each terminal is color-coded with its corresponding terminal on the VFD block. If there are any louvers or CO detectors connected to the CPC3, you should also verify that the wiring on the auxiliary terminals at the lower right-hand side of the panel are connected. If there are any expansion modules connected to the CPC3, Verify they are plugged in tightly and that all interlocking terminal blocks are wired properly. Also, there are two other B, R, and G terminal blocks at the center top of the CPC3 board. These serve no purpose and should not be used. Be sure that the 10-wire communication cable is tightly plugged into the receptacle in the VFD box. Check to be sure each color wire matches the same terminal on the CPC3. On the lower wiring of the VFD going to the inducer, there will be a separate terminal block. Verify all eight terminals have wires connected to them. Be sure that the S1 and S2 safety circuit from the VFD to the inducer is connected. If it's not, this will result in a CPC3 alarm with the display reading, inducer mechanical fault or C air mechanical fault. When double checking wiring, verify the left hand side of the panel is connected for draft while the right hand side is connected for combustion air. Double check the wire colors on the VFD receptacle and that they match the colors on each terminal of the CPC3 block. The wires on the transducer flip flop to the CPC3 panel. Make sure each terminal is connected to the same letter. Be sure the transducer is wired to the B, R, and G terminals that is attached to the 10-wire communication block. Again, there are two other B, R, and G terminal blocks at the top center of the board. These should not be used. Finally, you want to verify that the transducer is properly located. For a draft application, in a perfect world, it would be in an end cap two times the diameter of the vent pipe back from the manifold at the furthest point from the inducer. Now that we've verified the wiring and the transducer location, we're going to begin the startup. 
Turn the power on by pressing the black toggle switch on the CPC3 panel. The display will light up and begin its initialization. Once the CPC3 has initialized, you must unlock the keypad. To do this, press and hold the Save Setting button for five seconds. The display will read Keypad Open once it is unlocked. Here you want to make sure that the limit status OK LED, VFD status OK LED, analog LED, and digital LED lights are all lit. Again, the left-hand side of the panel is for draft, while the right-hand side is for combustion air. On either side of the panel, you will find two small white dip switches or toggle switches which will be used to verify rotation and voltage. For a 115 volt application, set the dip switches so that both are either up towards the ceiling or down towards the floor. For 230 volt or 460 volt applications, the dip switches must be opposite, one up towards the ceiling and one down towards the floor. Right now, it doesn't matter which is which as we'll change them later on during the startup. As you see here, we have changed transducers. The blue transducer now has the ports on either side of the face, while the old black transducer had them on the bottom, front and back. A TD2 is always used for draft applications with the sensing tube connected to the low port. A TD2 is also used for a sealed combustionary application. The sensing tube from the adjacent room or outdoors should be connected to the low port, leaving the high port open in the mechanical room. A TD3 is only used when you have an open combustion air application. The sensing tube from the adjacent room or outdoors should still be connected to the low port, leaving the high port open to the mechanical room. Here we need to activate the function of the CPC3 we're using. On the corresponding side for your application, press the Setup button followed by the Save Setting button. You should now see pressures on the proper line instead of XXX Fan Inactive. Be sure to only activate the function in which you're working. If you activate the combustion air side and there isn't a combustion air system, the CPC3 will go into alarm and fault out with a sea air mechanical fault or vice versa. If you activate the draft side and there isn't a draft system, inducer mechanical fault will appear. If this happens, you'll need to deactivate the improper function and restart the CPC3 before continuing on. As you see here, the pressures are displayed instead of the fan being inactive. The A is for automatic mode, followed by the set point, the actual pressure at percent fan speed. Now we want to put the system into test mode. Here we'll be able to check the rotation and change it if needed using the dip switches we talked about earlier. To put it into test mode, press the increase button followed by enter and the increase button again. Test run on will now appear on the bottom line of the display. If test run on does not appear on the bottom line, check the dip switches to be sure they are in the proper orientation. Press the increase button now and speed the fan up to 50%. As you do this, you can watch as the actual pressure changes as you speed up the fan. If you look at the VFD, the frequency reading changes as well while the fan speeds up. Once the fan has had time to stabilize, write down the actual pressure reading at 50%. Next, open the cover of the CPC3 and locate the dip switches again for your application. Here you will want to change them to the opposite position they are in right now. This will change the rotation of the fan. To do this, you do not need to turn the power off. You can simply change them as the fan is running at 
Again, verify that the dip switches are in the proper orientation. For 115 volt applications, both dip switches should either be up towards the ceiling or down towards the floor. For 230 volt or 460 volt applications, the dip switches should be opposite. After the fan has had time to stabilize, write down the actual pressure at 50%. Compare this reading with the first and decide which one provided a more negative on draft or more positive on combustion air draft. This will be the proper rotation. If needed, change the dip switches into the opposite position that provided the most pressure. After you've set the dip switches for rotation based on pressure, you want to visually inspect the inducer for proper rotation. For a VSAD series, the impeller will rotate in the counterclockwise rotation. For the VSUV series blower, the impeller will also operate in the counterclockwise rotation. And the VSRI combustion air fan will rotate in the clockwise rotation. Once the rotation has been checked, you can now turn off the fan. To do this, first hit the enter button. The display will now read test run off. Next, hit the setup button so the display reads keypad open. The inducer should now be slowing down and stopping. At this time, you can change any settings specific to your particular application. You can change the pre-purge, adjust the post purge, change the set points, and set your date and time. These settings can be accessed by pressing the setup button on the proper side of the CPC3. Finally, you're going to need to set the draft for the system. This step is only for draft applications. Each boiler should have an ABD series balancing damper on the outlet of the boiler. Start by closing off each damper. Connect your magna helix between the outlet of the heater and the balancing damper. Starting at the furthest heater from the fan, fire the burner and slightly open the balancing damper. As you're opening the ABD, watch your mag magna helix and set the draft per the appliance manufacturer's recommendations. This is typically between negative 0.02 inches of water column and negative 0.08 inches of water column. Perform this step at each heater. Once the draft is set at each heater, lock the ABD balancing damper in place at each boiler. Finally, after everything is set, you can now lock out the keypad. To do this, press the enter button. The display will read lock out keypad. Press the save setting button, which will then lock it out. If you press any buttons now, there will be no key function and the display will read keypad locked. This is the end of the CPC3 system startup. Thank you for joining me today.